I don't make eight figures in crypto yeah. in the next couple of years, there's a problem. The big problem that I had in the last bull run was that I wasn't prepared. And then now that I have like almost eight years of, you know, experience yeah. in it, I'm like, okay, dude, this next one, I'm gonna kill it. Crypto is the middle class's answer to be able to compete on a playing field. Remember, 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 remember. Okay, let me, hold on. I am giving financial advice, okay? This is financial advice. Take it to the bank. I'm super serious, okay? If you wanna know, okay, if somebody claims that they can time a market, know when a bull run is coming, know when good investments are gonna be up, know when to invest or divest, if anybody knows this, there's only one way to know if they're being truthful, okay? And that one way is if they are a multi-billionaire slash trillionaire, okay? Anybody else is full of shit. If you know how to time markets, one, you would never talk about it publicly ever, and two, you would leverage the out of every single possible dollar you could get your hands on and you would become a billionaire easily. You'd either be a consultant for a hedge fund and you make billions of dollars or you just have your own fund in your own money you manage and you make billions of dollars and you would leverage the out of it to do it, right? Anybody that claims that they can time anything is full of okay? The only exceptions are going to be people that spend their entire days or lives studying the financials of certain companies and blah, 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 blah. And even those people, arguably, never beat the market. Even those people arguably never beat the market, okay? Remember, um, I believe it was Warren Buffett who made bets with 10 different hedge funds that his like broad fund strategy for investing, he bet like 10 different people that they wouldn't beat. I think he won against all 10 people, okay? Don't, yeah. Don't ever take advice from somebody or always, whenever, the problem is when somebody says, I know when to invest in this, the problem isn't that they're just wrong on that. The problem is that it shows that they have a fundamental lack of understanding of like every single topic that is related to capital investing, okay? Every single topic is related to buying and selling stocks, investing in companies, all of this shit. They have no idea what the f you're talking about. Uh, because if you, if you could know this, if anybody could know this, they would be a billionaire or more reasonably, right? If you have concepts like the efficient market hypothesis, like this information is already out there. It's taken into account by other investors and the stock price will reflect accordingly. Nobody in, on YouTube is timing markets. It's never happening, okay? Ever. Is it worth it to debunk one of these kind of guys like Ian, Jack, Govan, Dunlap or something? Or is it just too dumb to do? There's just no point in doing it. If they wanted to prove their investment, you know, worthiness or whatever, just get like a third party like me. Here would be an interesting thing. I, I, I'll make an open challenge, but like I'm not part of this world and none of them would contact me. If you think you give really good financial investing advice on, um, on YouTube, DM me your portfolio, okay? All of your investments right now. And I can come back in a month or two and tell everybody like where you're at. We could play that game like, I don't know, six or seven times to see if you broadly beat the market or not with your investments. And then boom, just hand your whole portfolio over to, when I say hand it over, I mean like uh, tell somebody your positions, uh, give them your portfolio and then have them track it for a few months and see how your investments do. Get a third party to verify it. And then boom, there you go. Then you know whether you take advice from it or not. <laughs> but again, remember like nobody's giving advice on how to beat the market because everybody would follow the advice and then the market would even out. That's how it works, right? Do you think technical analysis works in this day and age? Yes, technical analysis is very good and it works very well when you're reading historical charts. <laughs> You'll never make a prediction for it. But if you really wanted to draw pictures and you never made it in an art class and you really wanted to recognize patterns but you weren't a big fan of astrology or constellations, then TA is for you. Grab a chart, you can draw whatever picture you want and it could be cool as Just don't expect to be able to draw anything into the future because you absolutely can. Is it the whole of Forex trading technical analysis and having some made consistent profits? Making it, remember, making a profit doesn't mean you are investing well, okay? Internalize this. Making a profit does not mean you made a good investment. Losing money doesn't mean you've made a bad investment, okay? Re okay, the financial markets are like planets in outer space. Nothing is standing still ever. You always have to take into account that all the planets are rotating, everything is spinning, okay? You're never shooting things in straight lines. Investing is the same. The markets are not moving at 0% every day, and if you gain 1%, you're winning. You're always comparing yourself to a moving target. If you wanna know if an investment is good or not, you have to compare it to the broader markets. If you invest in Amazon over the course of one year and your investment appreciates 15%, right? And you're beating the historic average of the S&P 500 that's seven to 10%, depending on if you account for inflation or not, you might think you've done good, but you might not be. If you compare your 15% appreciation appreciation over one year to a uh, S&P 500 gain of 25% over one year, your investment was bad. You lost 10%. That's what you're comparing yourself to. You're always comparing yourself to the broader markets. You're not comparing yourself to anything historically, and you're not comparing yourself to the number zero because that would be retarded, okay? The e-cigarette and vape market is projected to grow by an astonishing 30% from now to 2030. That means it's projected to be one of the fastest growing markets along with AI, microchips, and solar power. The stock we're talking about today is a penny stock out of Florida. And if you don't like sin stocks, then this one's not for you. But if you're here to make money, 
The stock is Kival Brands, ticker symbol K. Also remember, if somebody's giving you information on a stock and they're saying it's going to go big or go bad, that information that they're giving you is already incorporated into the price of the stock. That's why you can have Apple or Meta post a positive quarter and the stock price decreases. Well, why did that happen? They had a good quarter um, because they might have missed expectations. They might not have appreciated as much as people thought they did. And then the stock price will adjust accordingly. Even if they had a good quarter, they might the stock price might go down because people thought they were going to have a better quarter. Because remember, people are also incorporating future information into the current stock price too. The only exception, the only good information that you could trade on that is guaranteed or at least highly likely to allow you to beat the market is illegally obtained information. So for instance, in insider trading. Um, insider trading would allow you to beat the market because now you're incorporating information into your evaluation of a security that's not publicly available, but that's illegal and you'll get federally f***ed for it. I feel like you're missing the big thing with these TikToks. They buy the stock and then do content beforehand and rely on the low market cap to do pump and dumps. Sure, that can happen as well. Also be careful of that. From my understanding, the evidence with, t with respect to TA is okay. It is highly dependent on the methods used and how it is applied. There is a lot of dog shit tea leaf reading stuff in TA, but some indicators are quite useful. From my understanding, good TA is more about solid risk management than predicting future stock prices. I tried to link a study, but KickChat won't let me. Uh, I don't believe it all, but I love you. Don't investment bankers make literally millions? They all do, are they all doing leaf reading? Or am I missing something? People that invest in particular companies is a different type of investing than just broadly investing in stocks in the market. It's a different, or, or commodities or other things. It's a different type of investment. You can make money there, but that's not really so much just throwing money at like stocks. That's like specialty picking businesses and shit like that. In terms of do hedge funds make money, my understanding is somebody could come from a wrong or if they got a link in the chat or whatever. I don't believe there are any hedge funds that are beating the market in the long run. I don't think that's true. And if there are some that happen to a little bit, they tend to eat a lot in like management fees and everything else. So. But I mean, hey, if you've ever traded options, indicators like implied volatility can absolutely tell about your likelihood of risk. What is the point of that statement? I I your implied volatility might be high, but if your IV is high, that's going to be reflected in the price of the options that you're trading. Everything is incorporated into the prices. There's never a single number. There's never a combination of numbers that you can look at to divine the, the, like, like a better than a beating the market price on buying or selling a stock or an option, right? Your IV is going to be incorporated in the price as well, obviously. What would it take for you to get $3 million within six months? I'd take $100 million that I have, and I'd go to a big institution and say, hey, 10x my 100. That would be a bill. They'll do that. 100%. Okay? I'd take... <laughs> wait. Hold on. Wait. Where do, I, where do I go to just 10x my money real quick? In six months, he's taking $100 million to $6 billion or $100 million to $3 billion in six months? So I just go... I go to an institution and say, 10x my money. They do that real quick. Okay. A bill. Go buy $3 billion. A billion dollars will buy... be a bill. A hundred million that I have, and I'd go to a big institution and say, hey, 10x my 100. That'd be a bill. Don't if he could do that so easily, why doesn't he have like billions of dollars then? Like, do that 100%. Okay. I'd take the bill, go buy three billion. A billion dollars, I'll buy three or four billion dollars worth of real estate. We could do four million this year. I don't understand why you're thinking so small. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm curious why you play so small when you have. Yeah, why, wait, what was his answer? Why do you play small when you have the opportunity? Would you, do you just take that three billion back to them and 10x that over and over again? Or what's happening? <laughs> We just went from 100 million to three, four billion by just saying higher numbers. <laughs> yeah. Careful. When somebody tells you rich people do this, so you should too, rich people use debt in different ways. People have this really hard time understanding this. A, a rich person isn't going into debt to buy a big screen TV. A rich person doesn't go into debt so they can get a, or lease a new car, right? When rich people are utilizing debt, there's usually a variety of tax advantage strategies that are going along with this because the tax brackets that a lot of their income sits in are exorbitantly high compared to your tax bracket. Or they're using other sorts of like complicated or sophisticated investment strategies or things that just work because they make so much money. It doesn't apply to you. Uh, they're not using that debt to just buy a, a TV or something stupid and then making minimum payments on a credit card for, for 12 months, right? Don't, don't mind yourself, but I think, oh, rich people use debt. They, they do, but they utilize debt oftentimes for tax or other financial advantages, and you're not using it the same way. Yeah.